All right, so today we're gonna to run over what you need to know before buying a hoist, and also how to install one yourself. Before you go rushing into buying a hoist, there's a few things you need to consider. Vehicle weight, building dimensions, concrete thickness, this type of hoist, two post, four post, scissor lift, and also, all importantly, your budget. So let's take a closer look at some of those things now and how they can affect uh, what you might decision purchase might end up being. So we decided we want a two post hoist. So now let's have a look at the different types of hoists on offer and why we ended up making the decision on ours with the two post. So before we rush out and buy a hoist, first thing I wanted to do was actually poll our viewers. So on Instagram, we ran, uh, we had a picture on there and we just asked everyone out there who uh, members on our Instagram account, who you recommend, what you've had good experience with. Um, results come back. Over 50% of the people actually recommended Joel's Garage Gear. Uh, it wasn't a company we'd actually heard of before. Uh, the other 50% were made up of about four or five other different companies of a couple that I had heard of. So I actually sent an email to uh, Joel's Garage Gear and two other uh, hoist manufacturers. Joel's got back to me within literally the same day. I'm still waiting a response from the other two. So for me... Easy decision. Oh, tough luck to those people. Um, we made a decision pretty easily because what, what you've got to think of is... Um, it's all well and good when someone wants your money initially. What happens if you've got a problem with this and, and you need a warranty claim? If they don't want to actually respond to you when they're chasing your money to start with, what are they going to be like when you've actually got a problem with it? How, how quickly are they going to hide? They're going to go underground. You're never going to hear from them again. So that made the decision easy. Other choices we had to make too was I, I wanted someone with a bricks and mortar business. So I didn't want someone that's just selling a cheap one on eBay that one, when it comes to the crunch, you can't find them. They're not real. Um, they could be here, there, or anywhere. So Joel's has got a, a, a big warehouse um, down, down Geelong Way. Um, and also someone that had a good reputation in the industry. So like I said, again, once we found out that, um, that, that people had recommended Joel's, we started asking amongst our friends and colleagues and that, and a lot of people had, had heard of him and had used their products before. Um, so it made the decision pretty easy for us. So reputable company, bricks and mortar, instant communication in the end, no brainer. So now it's time for the hoist. So Brumi, why did we go for the two post? Yeah, good question. Question uh, probably commonly that people out there will be asking. So two post or four post? Four post probably need a little bit more room. Um, pretty tight on room here as it is. Uh, four post also, you, you won't be able to get the wheels and tyres off very easily because the car is actually sitting on ramps permanently. So The upside of a four post is you can just drive straight onto it, really. Yeah, exactly. So um, that, they are very easy. A lot of people who want to store cars yeah. um, will often use a four post, yeah. but obviously we're working on the car so that the two post is a go. Um, when it comes to two posts, there are two distinct styles. There's the what we've got here set up, which is the clear floor, and then there's a base plate model. So a lot of workshops that you'll go out there, you'll see a lot still with the base plate. Um, they are a more affordable hoist, which is why, you know, if you are running a workshop and you needed to buy two or three or four hoists, you may, hoists you may go for that. Um, we went for the clear floor because we've got race cars, so that means we'll be servicing them a lot, which means we may be taking transmissions in and out a lot. So clear floor means I can get the transmission jack in here underneath, underneath the middle of the car no obstruction, take the trans out and wheel it away. So that, that's a big, big plus and it was almost a non-negotiable point. With in that, my so. experience, I go into a lot of workshops. I'd have to say in the last couple of years, the clear floors are becoming pretty much that's all you see in terms of people buying new hoists, I yeah. think. Yeah, it, it was the, the base plate model was an older design and you'll see it in make the older hoists are like that. But yeah, the newer hoists hoist are all these clear post floors. So um, that's that. Let's look at the next criteria. Now, two post hoists obviously come with different types of arms. Do you want to yep. run through a bit of that? Yeah, so um, they can be your traditional style arms like this. Uh, the, the traditional style arm may be a three piece or a two piece or whatever, or there's other hoists these days where you might have seen what they call asymmetrical arms. So this, these are symmetrical in that the arms both fold out at, at, the same, at the same angle. Asymmetrical arms, generally the columns are on an angle uh, and the arm, the front arm for the front of the car will be much shorter and a much different angle. So it's almost at, um, it's almost a straight angle. So if you've ever seen a hoist that has arms like that, yeah. essentially instead of like that, th that design is asymmetrical. Um, I went with symmetrical at the standard traditional type because with an asymmetrical hoist, you actually have to load the car in only one direction. So with a really tight area working in here, um, it meant that if a car come in front on and I had the asymmetrical arms, 
I'd actually have to spin that car around and load it at a particular way. So for me, that was also out straight away. And it's not where we are here. It's not that straightforward. And no, turning it's, a it's, car around. it's not practical to have, yeah. have asymmetrical arms often in, in garage setups anyway. It may be or in a workshop where you can easily manipulate where you want to get a car. But um, the best part about uh, this one from Joel's is that the rear arm is actually a three piece. So uh, the reach it has is, is just is huge. Uh, and the two's come out as well. So they've also all got extenders and screw on pads and that. So um, I can tell already that, that this is the much better option um, for what we need. Yeah, for sure. So, all right, let's move on to the next step. One important thing when choosing a hoist, you've got to know what sort of vehicle you're going to be putting on the hoist. Yep. Yeah, that's right. So for us, capacity, as we said earlier at the start of the video, is, is one of the first things you have to tick off. Um, we work on traditionally light cars like this Mazda here, or even, well, I mean, well, I've got a Commodore as well, um, but those vehicles, yeah. you know, are two ton max or whatever. So the reality is we're not going to be putting the old F truck on the hoist. No, I mean, the, the vehicle weight for the, for the F truck could go on this hoist. Mm. It could quite easily go on this hoist. However, um, this thing's so far off the ground, I'm never going to need to do it. So if you've got a big four wheel drive that, that may be weighed down and may be pretty heavy, uh, that you're going to be working on stuff like that, uh, the gross weight that the hoist can um, handle is pretty important. For me, I was just going to go for whatever the most affordable option was uh, at the weight because I think they start at three and a half tonne. So three and a half, four, four and a half, five is pretty common. Um, in the clear floor, the clear floor starts at four and a half tonne. So I went for that one. They do have a five tonne model, um, but I have no need for, for it to step up to that high. So also with the garage full and concrete, um, you know, this, this floor, I think, is about 100 and just on the limit. So the limit's generally about 140, 150 mil. Um, just check the, the regs and um, the instruction manual for that. But this, this concrete floor is just on that. So if you had a big workshop where it was, you know, 200 mil thick slab or whatever, the five tonne would be, would be no worries. But um, I think even at the 150, it's, it's fine. But yeah, this is more than enough. Because I mean, there's, the cars are, most cars we're putting on there will be one and a half tonne or less, yeah, more than yeah. likely. So that's fine. Um, that's pretty much it for the, the main uh, criteria when we're picking or why we picked our particular two post host. So let's take a closer look at this specific two post hoist and um, have a look at what sets it apart and why we love it so much. All right, so we've got a lift of choice. Now let's take a closer look at some of the stuff that really sets us apart. So the first is obviously a big one piece column. So these are all one piece and so is the crossbar. So some others you'll see that these are maybe two piece where they can be extended out at different heights and the cross beam might be two different heights to do two different widths at a, as a, you know, might be a one size fits all type of hoist. Um, this is big, solid, strong, one piece column, one piece across, so extra, extra strength there, which makes a big difference. Um, the lifts, full 1.4 meter hydraulic ram, so these lift really high, really fast, really efficient. Love that part of it too. Uh, you can see here the pads. Um, so the pads are just your, your, your screw-in type and we've got an extension piece here as well. So the screw-in pads make it really easy to adjust the height uh, of, of, the, of the hoist depending on what the car is on. So that's great. One of the big points here is 2650 millimeter drive-through access. So from here to here is 2650. Now you can see just how much room here. I mean, I can stand on the side of this car between where, where, the, where the hoist um, column is compared to where the car is. So um, most of the masses I work on are this wide, but this is a 626, so it's actually pretty wide. So it's, it's not too much um, narrower than the Commodore is out there. So having this down in a tight environment means I can easily walk through and walk over here on both sides, not just also around. So that's, um, that's really good that it's so wide out. Um, it's also for you workshop guys out there, it is WorkSafe registered, which is a big thing too. So this means if you're going to put this in a workshop, you need that um, tick of approval to, to make sure you have your insurances and everything right. So this is workshop registered. And last but not least, there's a full three year warranty on this thing. So peace of mind buying, um, three year backed by uh, Joel's Garage Gear, which is really important when you're investing something like this. Uh, you want to make sure that the company you're buying it from is fully behind the product. So three year warranty shows that they are. Uh, we have obviously, we've, we've been out, we've worked in workshops. Luke's behind the camera right now. He's been in more workshops than people have ever had hot dinners and you've seen some absolute horror stories out there. Um, you know, welds cracking, things being uneven and that. So you can see it's not gonna crack on this. This actually has a six bolt base plate. So it really holds it firm in place here and too. And you'll see 
there's no safety lock on this side because it has a one um, a single safety lock. So it's not a dual safety lock, which a big, big time saver. It might not sound like much, but little things like that really, really make um, for great details. You don't think about it before you buy it, but trust me that the, the single point safety lock is, is a big one. So I can just be over there with the controller, l raise it up, unlock it and bang, drop it down without having to go over both sides of the column. So um, that's pretty much it for specifics of some of the reasons why we absolutely love this hoist. So when you get the hoist, you're obviously gonna be under here. You start thinking, wow, how am I gonna get that gearbox out of here? Uh, I used to build exhaust on the ground, holding it with my head or whatever. How's a better way of doing it now that it's all, all this is above my head? And also, how do I get the fluids from out of here down to the ground without splashing them everywhere? Uh, tools like this is, is pretty much how you do it. So this is a, an oil recovery tank. Um, basis is this is, you got a big pan, this, this is adjustable in height, so we can come up to as high as you need or down as low as you need. Once this fills up, you can see on the side here, there's an indicator, which will tell you how much fluid's in it. There's, a comp there's an air compressor inlet here and a regulator. What you do is you'll pressurize this system. So you can see so there it says, do not exceed 15 PSI. So you, you put maybe you know, up to 10 for whatever PSI in it, and then you lock off the pressure and with this tube, open the valve, it'll force everything out, you got your recovery tanks of whatever you want and it'll all come out and then you take it away to your recycling centre or whatever. So that'll make your job a hell of a lot easier with catching fluids because there'd be nothing worse than having it up here under this trans and then bang, all the fluids just Wait, all over the floor. So. Where's the motor? Uh, Bluetooth power for this one, so new, new electric I should vehicle. say engine. Yeah. I'll upset some of our European friends <laughs> if I say The motor. engine's actually... Uh, over on the bench over there in pieces and that, so we'll look at that in another video sometime soon. Obviously with that, yeah, there is no engine in the car, but there's, uh, there is a transmission, and the best way to get the drive line in is with one of these. So if you do need to get the transmission in and out, um, this right here is, is the way to do it. So this is uh, essentially just a giant jack with a base plate here and chains that you can wrap around a gearbox or a differential and yeah, jack it up because I mean, I can tell you what, this Hilux diff is super, super heavy. And um, that gear, that Jacko gearbox, it might be um, small in stature, but you can imagine um, if you had something like a Turbo 400 in here or some of the big manual gearboxes, uh, you, you're, not, you're not hoisting those into place without um, doing a shoulder injury or, or your back or whatever. So these will put them up in place, hold it there, bolt it in. And the best part about this is it becomes one man operation, which is really important to somebody like me who's working by themselves 99.9% .9 of the time. So something like this is absolutely vital and something else that's really vital when you're working by yourself or not just by yourself, but um, to make your job easier are these um, hoist stands. So you can imagine if you're building an exhaust, um, how, do you, how do you hold pieces up there where you've got like a, a large section of exhaust from here to here? Um, what do you use? Well, you use something like this. So um, this, Easily just, um, you can rotate this into place. Um, you just spin this and it will raise it or lower it. So th these are great for just holding things in place uh, where we need. So we've got two of those obviously because if you've got an exhaust, you want one at one point, one at, one at the start, one at the end to hold it in place. It'll make your job a hell of a lot easier when you're trying to fabricate things. So looking forward to using this especially because it will make my job much, much easier when I'm making exhaust longer than the one meter one that's on this car that is, but yeah. So that's pretty much for the tools. Let's get back to uh, wrapping up this hoist. Very, very simple. You're going for the oil out. Change your oil in about 30 seconds. Yeah. Look, I'm not wearing gloves everywhere. The best part about this is it's got a valve here. So as it's draining, I can actually see it coming out. And if you have a look at that, um, I can probably drop this a bit lower so you can see it. But that actually looks really, really clean as well. So we've done, um, I don't think I've actually changed this trans fluid since, it's, uh, since the car's been racing, to be honest. And if you look at that, that looks good. And I can tell by the, the scent of it, it's, um, it's pretty cool too. So uh, no problems there. And now I just turn the valve. And you can see it's sort of bubbling there because it's flowing down. 
The lovely scent of auto trans fluid. Yeah, but the best part about it is, it, it smells like how it smells when it comes out the bottle. The worst part about differential fluids or auto trans fluid is, when they're burnt, that's when they absolutely stink. But this is um, this smells great. And if you have a look in here now, uh, if I grab a, a light, this is the best part about this too. Is that you can't really see anything sort of metallic-y in there, which is really good news. Now. This was a brand new transmission. This is pretty much only the second time it's ever been dropped. So you'll always get a little bit of something in there. All right, so now that we've run through all of the features of this hoist, why don't we show everyone how we actually got the thing up? How we got it up is a very easy story. Bang, <laughs> right here. <laughs> but in all seriousness, let's take a look at it. Get a couple of mates around and you'll have this thing up in no time. All right, so that's how you pick out a hoist that you need. Uh, we picked out the one that best suits our needs. Now it's time to put it up, and this is how we go about it. First thing you're gonna need is some muscle. So, uh, Giordo's here, and then I got a day laborer from the local uh, hardware store, so, hola. Yes, speak espanol, English? Hablo inglés. Hablo inglés, perfect. So, uh, employed some muscle, and we'll uh, get these big columns up. We'll show you exactly how we do it. So, it's pretty easy. You'll be able to do this at home. So, if you are, do have a home garage like I do, uh, keep watching, and we'll show you exactly how you put it up yourself. So before we throw the columns up, obviously this point, which is going to be the top of the column, will be, I think it's 3.6 metres or, or so, or whatever, up in the air. So instead of having to fiddle around with bolts and, and stuff overhead when you're all the way up a ladder, because we're just doing it at home, of course, uh, I've bolted these on the ground because once they're up there, uh, I've also then got to put the cross beam up. So this gives me a, a surface to put the cross beam up, take the weight off it, and, and shimmy it all into place rather than having to try and do it all at once and uh, you know having to carry all that weight because the cross beam like the rest of this hoist is really heavy duty and heavy so you don't want to be up there up a ladder fiddling around with all this stuff so uh, that's what we're done now so now next part is the really exciting part we've got to put these columns into place so you see we've got a hoist here wrapped around what we're going to do is take the weight off this column Try and get the hoist up to the hoist leg up to about an angle like that, maybe 45 degrees or so, or 30 degrees. Get a couple of people under it, take the weight off it on their shoulders, take the noose off it with the hoist, and then lift it up into place. All the weight for this is essentially in this bottom third. You can see how heavy duty the, the, the feet is here at, and the base. So all the weight of it's essentially here. So once we can sort of, you know, it's like a fulcrum, once we can move that pivot point to where the weight over the base isn't pulling down anymore, it's pushing back up. It's just a case of walking underneath it and pushing it into place. So, employed a couple of people to come help us and uh, we'll give it a crack. So, without further ado, let's get these things into place. All right, no problem. So, thanks to uh, these pythons right here, this is up. Um, we've just put it out the way at the moment because we've got to obviously have some access here to the other column that has to go up on the other side. Got some lines marked on the ground, which is 3.551 metres exactly from this mark to here, which will actually be from the end of the column to the other end of the column over there. So we'll just push this one as far off as we can to the side. So it gives us enough room and access to get the other one in, whack that one up. And once we've got that in place, then we can start playing games up here in the ladder with the, uh, the crossbar and stuff. But one down, one to go. So you can just use a chalk line um, to measure stuff out. I used one of these um, lasers essentially. So what I did was, you can see here, you've got a perfectly level line here. And I also ran another one uh, on the other side, which basically gave me my cross of where I wanted to go. So you can do that easily basically with the chalk line, but I had this laser here anyway, so I'll just use that. So now that we know where that needs to go, um, you don't bolt it in place just yet. What you want to do is the crossbar that we've got over there, you put that up, probably bolt one side of the crossbar up and then work the other, other column in to get it exactly square. Then once it's all square, then you can bolt it in. So we'll get that crossbar up now, then square it up, bolt these down. You can see this has got a little bit of play in it. That's because no concrete slab will either be 100% absolutely true. So we've got some little shim packers that we'll pack in. Only looks like we need one mil, if that. So that's fine, I think there's tolerance up to about three or three to five mils, so uh, that'll be fine. We'll do that, get that sorted, bolt it in place, and then start on running all the safety catches and the hydraulic lines. How it work? So this is the LS going into the F truck. Yep. 
All right, so we've got the uh, hoist legs in, we've got the cross beam in. We need to now fasten this to the concrete. So we do that by these uh, anchors. It's a mechanical anchor, so that'll slide into the concrete and then you'll torque them down. This little bit here spreads out and holds it in place so it can't pull out. There's six of these all the way around, so there's 12 all up that we need to do. Now the drill these holes, concrete is ultra hard. Um, some people think you can do it with just your normal hammer drill that you got at home. This is a 20 mil bit. You cannot do this with your standard off the shelf sort of normal hammer type drill. You really, really need one of these drills. This is called an SDS and it's called that because that little bit on the end is much different than a normal drill bit. That slides in here, locks in place, and you can see the hammer action on this one compared to a normal style drill, which will just like chip away at it. So you need something like this. Also with concrete, you'll have uh, dust. That dust is actually really, really, really harmful. Um, so you need to wear, and these are ultra loud, so you need to wear eye protection, ear protection, um, some form of protection for dust. And then once the dust is around and we've drilled the hole, we need to clean it out properly and then suck all that dust out of there. So you either need a uh, vac, and we'll probably need to get a blower to blow it all out, because if there's any dust left in that hole, this won't be able to slide in all the way. Once that slides in some, you won't actually be able to pull it back out. So you need to make sure that hole is the right depth to start with before you put it in at all. So let's start doing this now and uh, progress. So next stage is we've got to run the cables for these arms to move up and down. So they run, they bolt here, they run all the way over uh, the top and then come back down the other end of the hoist and bolt onto the top of that arm too. So to be able to access uh, these, first of all, we've got a little inspection plate here. We'll just undo the screws. I'll do them both anyway, so make sure we've got access. And then you can see in there, we can easily access the holes that we need to. So the one that's on this corner yep. goes over on, on the say say the front one. Then comes down. And then it comes down back. through that slot, down through that pulley, and then the and up to the back one. So this one will be the, the reverse basically. It'll go over the back pulley, all the way across on the back pulley, down the hole, up and at the back. So easy. So we're just installing the hydraulic hoses now. Hydraulic uh, pressure is what makes these columns lift up and down. So just got to install them into their right place. So then when we fill, uh, fill a reservoir with hydraulic fluid, we'll just bleed it off. There's bleeders at the top of these, um, at the top of these hydraulic units. So makes it pretty easy to, uh, to bleed the air that's in here. Hydraulic lines are in, all the pulleys are in and, and uh, the cables. We've just also installed the uh, limit bar. So limit bar has a switch on it, which stops the hoist if it hits that limit bar. So obviously you don't want the car to just continue on into the cross beam and crush your roof. As soon as it hits that bar, the bar lifts up, flicks a switch and it stops the hoist power. So it's just another safety measure on these hoists to stop it going too high. So next is installing the safety lock wire rope. So obviously as the column rises, uh, you might have been familiar with if you know hoists or lifts, how they work. They, they, a lot of them, and um, these hydraulic style, click into place. So you hear them go up and go click, click, click. Uh, when you want it to go back down, however, you need to re uh, release those uh, stops. So what, these, what this does is from both sides, chain runs up one column all the way over the top, runs down the other column, and then attaches here. So this is the right hand side. This is this side of the column, and you'll pull, you basically make the, make the lift go up a little bit, like 50 mil, then you'll pull this bar, and it'll release the safety lock, and then you just hold this bar, and the, 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 the hoist will drop all the way down to the floor. So we'll install those now. So this next job is filthy as. You need to uh, lubricate all four corners inside of here. Inside of these, there's little Teflon pads, which, um, help the, obviously, keep the column centered and then stop wear so it's not directly on just a, 
a hard steel surface. So what I have to do now is put this great stuff, this is just um, a lithium grease, up as high as this column is going to raise in it. So give something to the Teflon to, to slide over uh, to make sure that they don't wear as well. So I might look like a professional, that's right. I might look like a professional, but we're still backyarders at heart. So, um, I know. Got to look the part. Are you installing a hoist? Do you uh, you want to cut down some of the trees at the back here today? Definitely got the lumberjack on. So, no, it's, it's, for once we had a warm day today. I had the full boost hoodie on. I took it off. Yeah. When was the last time you stood in a t-shirt? Well, I haven't seen you do any hard work by today, so I'm not sure. I'm, I'm a I'm a lifelong <laughs> cripple. My back's stuffed. So I'm, it's true. I'm outlawed from doing anything. That's true. This has actually been pretty easy to uh, to erect in that. So I've been um, I've been impressed with how quickly it's gone up. Actually, the instructions were really, really clear, so that's helped a ton. So excited to put this into use and a couple of other items that we've got that we'll run through when we uh, get a car in the air to explain them a bit better. But we're pretty much at the stage now where we are done. Last thing we have to do is, um, so this is ISO 46. I think you can use 32 or 46. It's just a hydraulic oil. That's a great hydraulic oil. Uh, it's for heavy duty stuff. So. Uh, use this as gear oil also in my mill so I've always used the Penrite stuff like we do in this uh, channel we love it it works great pick this up and uh, we'll fill so this vat gets filled hydraulic pump pumps pressure uh, to this hydraulic column all the way across to that hydraulic column and then that's what raises uh, the lift legs all the way up so we'll fill this up and then we are pretty much done for the day because we have to get our registered electrician in to wire up the motor. Then once that's done, yeah, we can film again and hopefully this old old bucket over here will be uh, a few metres up in the sky. All right, so our mate Sparky's been, he's wired it all up, got the car in place and we're ready to go. So time for the money shot. Let's see this thing in action. <laughs> Up she goes. So you can probably hear the clicks going through the safety lockouts. The one thing you'll notice they're at the same time, which means this hoist is adjusted mint. So that's pretty much all the way up. Now, um, as you can see here, it's still it's not sitting on one of the lockouts, so all I do is just get the release, drop it down, and now it's on the lockout. You can see that's firm now, so that's not sitting on the hydraulic ram, it's actually sitting on the lockouts inside of there, which means there's got a mechanical arm on both sides of the arms holding this up here now, so that's pretty much it. All right, so that's it, it's up, and I can tell you right now it's already been life-changing. It's something I've wanted for a long, long time, I'm really excited to start using it. I can see already what a massive benefit it's been. I can see all the, well, <laughs> awfulness underneath this car that I probably couldn't see before. Um, so we'll try and fix some of that up. But the best part about it now is we can get under here. We've got the um, fluid reservoir, transmission jack. We've got um, hoist stands, which will make fabricating so much easier than servicing this car. I can pull the transmission now out in probably half an hour, I can change all the fluids in a couple of minutes and if I need a fabricate exhaust, they'll be done in, in no time. So big thanks to Joel's Garage Gear for, for this. It is an unbelievable piece of equipment and all the machinery that he does. Um, Joel's really genuine guy. He's a car enthusiast like us. He's got a couple of really old um, classic muscle car of Falcons um, and Fords. So he's not just some kind of big, big corporate dude. He works off um, some really low margins, really sharp price, which is why uh, we went with him because he's just like us. He's a car enthusiast first. He wants to help everyone out there. So definitely go check him out, guys. It'd be a big benefit to you if you can fit one of these in. They're so much more affordable than they used to be when, when I first started working in workshops 15, that's, 20 years ago. That's an understatement. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, these, these hoists back then, you know, you would have been looking at $5,000 plus where you can get something like this well and truly for under, under three grand these days very, very easily. And it's a nice, it's a nice piece of quality gear too. So, um, really pumped to start using it and um, can't wait to get a few more projects on this hoist so that's pretty much it for today uh, if you've got any questions post it in the comments or even better contact joel direct at joel's garage gear because as i said before he is a gun when it comes to um, replying to emails and, and catching up with people so um, can't thank him enough and yeah definitely send all your inquiries to him 
uh, because this is all his stuff. So the best person to ask is the guy selling it. So until next time, we'll catch you later.